All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We're going to multiply and divide again. This time we're doing mixed numbers and decimals. I thought to get us in the mood there, we do some more bread celebrities. There's Toast to Malone rocking out in the middle. Awesome. I love it. Uh, also, a reminder this is a no calculator zone. We're still in the no calculator land, uh, crunching these numbers out. So let's get this rocking and rolling here. Excellent. So what are we going to do with mixed numbers? Well, we're going to make them improper fractions. So as long as you can make improper fractions, it's just the same as last section. So let's get it rolling here. If I have three and two thirds, remember I'm going to take the bottom of the fraction and times it by the whole number in front. So three times three is nine plus this number on top. So we multiply here, add here. We're looking at that as 11 thirds. So we're going to rewrite the mixed number as an improper fraction. Then we're going to go ahead and just multiply it out. So you have to rewrite the problem. So this one takes a little bit longer. Don't stress out. Take the second to write it. You'll get way more answers correct if you do it that way. Uh, once we have it, just multiply across the top. So 11 times 4 is 44. Multiply across the bottom, I get 15. I don't think that bad boy reduces, so I am good to go. Rock and roll. So I'm going to leave them as an improper fraction. I'm totally cool with that. I think improper fractions are easier to work with, uh, to add or subtract or whatever. So I'm going to leave them improper. If you make them a mixed number, I'm totally down with that. You could totally do that if you like it. Um, this would be what, two, that's 30, so you'll be two and 14 fifths. Uh, just make sure you do it correctly, so it's another chance to make a mistake. So let's just leave it improper if we can, but if you wanna go back, good for you, bring the pain. All right, so again, mixed numbers are just kinda of hard to work with. It's hard to multiply these together, so we're gonna get out of this form and make it improper fraction. I almost said improper, improper fraction? No, improper fraction. So four times two is eight, plus that one on top, that's nine fourths. And we're gonna say times this by what? Five times one is five, plus the two is seven fifths. So write that on down, and then we can multiply it. So remember our rule straight across the top, I'm gonna say nine times seven is 63, straight across the bottom, that's 20. I don't think that reduces, and again, I'm gonna leave that as improper, just like that. If you are going for it and want to say yes, I know 20 goes into 63 times with 320s left over, that's fantastic. You can do that as well. All right, the finale. What if I just multiply a uh, mixed number by a regular um, integer here? So, sure, but just remember integers are fractions too. So, rewrite this bad boy, four times four is 16, plus the three on top, 19 fourths. And what I like to do is say, I'm gonna do a positive times a negative. So right off the bat, I know this is gonna be a negative answer. So a positive times a negative is a negative. So I'm gonna times this by a negative two over one. Let me draw big parentheses here. And now I can go ahead and multiply this out. 19 times two, 38. Four times one is four. And don't forget that negative, it's a negative answer. Does this one reduce? It should, because they're both even, even. So two's gonna go in there. Two goes into 38 19 times. Two goes into four two times. So this is a negative 19 halves. Wapow, there it is right there. If you wanna rewrite it, we could also say it's a negative what? Nine would be 18 and a half. Fantastic, so that's it for multiplying mixed numbers. What about decimals, you ask? Well, here we go, let's do some decimals. So uh, you may have learned a different way to multiply than me, I'm not sure. This is the way I learned to multiply. I don't care as long as you're getting the right answers, but I'm gonna go with the way that, uh, that I, I learned how to do it is multiplying like this. So if we're gonna multiply 6.2 times eight, we're gonna just straight up stack them, multiply them. And what do we do here? We just multiply eight times two is 16 with the old bring over the one over here. Six times eight is 48, add the one there is 496. And then we say how many decimal places are there? This is moved over one decimal place. Normally decimals here, we moved it over one, so I'm gonna move this over one, so it's 49.6. So if you do some kind of box method or whatever, that's totally cool as long as you come up with the same answer, 49.6. Fantastic, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the stack and multiply method, so I'm just gonna stack them up, multiply it. So in this case, I'm going to say two times five is 10, carry that old one, two times three is six plus the one, and then four times five, let's get rid of this, we've already done him. So if now I do, I bring down a zero as a placeholder value, so I'm gonna bring down that zero, and I'm gonna say four times five is 20, put that two up there, so it's gonna be seven, uh, three times four is 12, plus that, plus that two is, 14, holy cow, it's been a while since I've multiplied 
old school, write it all out. So 1470, but check it out. How many times did I, how many decimal place values do I have? I have one decimal place here. I have two decimal places here. So I gotta go one, two over and put the decimal here. So you have to count how many decimal places you have. This should be 14.70, which again, that point zero doesn't matter. It's, it would just be 14.7. You can write the zero or not. It's not gonna impact your answer either way. Fantastic. Moving on. One more. Will it freak you out if I go decimal times an integer? Hopefully not. So it's again 0.75 times this by negative 2. And again, I look at this and say, hey, what's my answer going to be? A positive times a negative? I know I'm going to get a negative answer. So don't miss the easy points on that. Now I'm just going to multiply everything here by 2. So 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1 over here. 7 times 2 is 14 plus the 1 is 15. I have two place values. So I'm going to go two place values over here and say it's 1.5. Don't forget it's negative, negative 1.5. Fantastic, so that's multiplying. So I can multiply all day. What about division? Let's go ahead and divide it. Well, if you can multiply it, you can divide it. It's the same thing. So I'm gonna rewrite my mixed number. Four times two is eight, plus that three on top. I'm gonna say it's 11 fourths. And now, remember when I divide, I'm actually gonna multiply, flip the second fraction to multiply, so this becomes five over seven. So we have to rewrite these anyways. I'm just gonna rewrite the mixed numbers improper. Now I can multiply across the top. I have 11 times five is 55, four times seven is 28, and I'm just gonna leave him improper. Boom, just to keep this train rolling. All right, what if the mixed number is second? Well, it's gonna be four fifths. Let's go ahead and just rewrite the mixed number. So I don't like these mixed numbers. They're just a pain to work with. Two times three is six plus the one is seven, so it's seven halves. I was thinking of Mr. Sullivan for some reason, a pain to work with. Oh, love it. Um, now once we have this, uh, if I divide it, I can actually flip the second fraction and multiply. So seven divided by two, multiply that is really two seven. So now I'm good to go. So I had to get rid of the mixed number, make it improper, then flip the second fraction and multiply. So I think I gave you a little less problems in the practice because these take a little bit more work to set up and uh, multiply out. So four times two is eight on top. Five times seven is 35. I don't think it reduces, and I am just good to go. There it is. One more of these bad boys to wrap it up. Again, I've got this integer, so it's a negative. And I like to think about this. What is a negative divided by negative? My answer is going to be positive. So I have to get a positive here. So first of all, don't let the negative freak you out if I'm going um, my mixed number. It's just going to be five times two is 10, plus that four is 14. And the only difference here, it is a negative, so I have something like this. Now I'm gonna flip the fraction, put three over one, flip that second fraction, so I'm gonna say negative five over 14. And we know along a negative times a negative is positive anyway, so I'm, I'm just to have that follow it through. So three times five is 15. One times 14 is 14. Boom, mixed number division all day long. So a lot of steps, just be careful. Let's wrap this bad boy up here with some division. This one is kind of a pain, and if you have a different way of doing it, but I, I'm not sure if there is one. I think it's just classic long division. So remember, it's the first number divided by the second number. It's 3.6 being divided by two. So you take that first number, and then we're gonna divide it. There's the division sign. I'm gonna divide it by two. So if this happens with decimals, no problem. Just do your straight long division. How many times does two go into three? Just once, so I'm gonna put a one there. Two times one is two. And I'm gonna subtract them here. What is three minus two? It's one. Bring down the next number. So bring down that six. And how many times does two go into 16? Uh, it's gonna go eight times. And it is 16. Subtract those, you get zero. And the decimal just goes straight up with where it is. So that is my answer. It is 1.8. So that is pretty cool. That's not too bad when the decimal's there. Check out the next example though. So now I have a whole number six. It's being divided by a decimal. So this is a little bit trickier, I feel like, by 0 0.5. Before I even start, I gotta tweak this a little bit. So here's the rule. This is normally 6.0. We don't write that 0, .0 but there's a decimal there. This needs to be an integer. I can't have a decimal here, so I'm gonna move it over to make it a decimal. To do that, I'm gonna move this over one because it keeps it equal on both sides. So I'm really looking at, now here's the decimal, and this is just the number five. So how many times does five go into six? It goes one time. And then I'm gonna subtract, and six minus five is one. Bring down that zero is 10. How many times does five go into 10? Twice. 
and this one works out nice and neat as a remainder of zero. And there's the decimal just comes straight up. So remember, we move the decimal. So it's not 1.2, it's actually 12. If you want to say 0, 0.0, you could. But really, this is 12. Fantastic. What if I decide to put a decimal in both of them? Ooh, being rough here, Mr. Bruss. Decimals in both of them. Before I even start, I've got a positive divided by a negative, so I know my answer is going to be negative. Don't miss that. So I'm going to take the first number, 4.8, Divide it by the second number, 0 0.3, and it is negative. And you can put that there or not. I just know my answer is going to be negative. Now I need to move some decimals. I can't have it here, so i got to move it over 1, which means I have to move this one over 1. So if you want to rewrite it, we're really saying uh, 48, the decimals here, 48.0 is divided by 3. So it's easier. Maybe I should rewrite the last one. That's much cleaner. Look at this. So how many times does 3 go into 48 or go into the 4? It goes once into the 4. And I'm going to subtract them. Bring, so 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down the next number. So there's 8. How many times does 3 go to 18? That is 6. So that's going to work out perfectly. So I get 0, 16.0, or just 16. And it, we know it's got to be negative. That is it. Holy cow. I know that's a lot uh, going on right there. Good luck on the practice in the match check. Hope it goes well. Peace out.